Hi, so we're on to the third video now. Um, in this third video, I want to cover three uh, topics. The first one is your introduction. So when you knock on a stranger's door, how to introduce yourself, how to open up that conversation. The second uh, topic will be on how to close that conversation. So after you've led that person to the Lord, after they've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, how to close that conversation off. And third, I'd like to just give you some additional Bible verses to use for your armory, you know, as additional tools um, if you need to further prove your points to someone that's challenging you. Um, but first of all, as I suggested, I need you going door to door with your gospel tracks. Now, we call these gospel tracks in, you know, churches. And I, before I got into a soul winning church, I didn't even know what that word tract me meant. So, you know, and I, I strongly encourage you not to use church words that, you know, your average person out there would not really be familiar with. And so the word I like to use is leaflet. So when I'm talking to someone at the door, you know, I'll call this a leaflet and that they know what a leaflet is. Uh, my other recommendation is to have your Bible in your pocket. That's why it's great to have a Bible that's smaller, maybe just a New Testament, something that you can fit in your pocket. So right now I've got my waterproof Bible in my pocket. And should the opportunity present itself, I'll be able to just pull it out of my pocket and bring it out. Okay. But um, the reason I recommend having your Bible in your pocket is because we want to um, interact with the person at the door. What I have observed, something that I've, in my experience, that I've learned is when you've got your Bible in your hand um, and someone might look out the window to see, should I open the door? And they see that Bible, they will immediately refuse because they think you're a Jehovah Witness or that you're a Mormon. And that's a sad reality. You know, I wish they knew, hey, the Baptists are here. But more often than not, they're thinking, hey, it's just a Jehovah Witness. It's just a Mormon or, you know, some, just some other religious thing. But that's why I tend to keep my Bible in my pocket. And I'm not being deceptive. I open up very clearly and tell them I'm from a church. But this is how you want to um, introduce yourself. So you've knocked on someone's door. You've rung the doorbell. They've come out, you know, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Kevin and this is my friend you know, whoever your, whatever your friend's name is. Always give people your name, okay? Because you're not here in secret. You know, you're not doing things privately. You're doing a very public ministry and people want to know that, hey, you're, you're a real person. You know, you're not afraid to give your name. And people, once they know your name, they're, they're a little bit more comfortable with who you are, okay? So my name is Kevin. This is my friend. And then the next thing that I say is, we're just going house to house in your area handing out these leaflets. I'd, I'd love to leave you one to read later when you get the chance. Okay, and notice there, I still haven't mentioned the church. All I'm saying is, look, we're going house to house. We haven't targeted your house, you know, specifically your house. We're just going through your whole neighborhood. I'd love to leave this leaflet for you to read later when you get the opportunity. Now, the reason why you kind of want to use words like this is so they realize, oh, okay, that's harmless. Yes, I can take a piece of paper. And they're saying, I can read it later. So I know they're not going to force me to stand here for the next 20 minutes, you know, to hear them out. So, you know, they take the, you know, they take the, they take the gospel track, they take the leaflet and, you know, you've told them, hey, you can read it later. So you've get, already made them feel comfortable that you're not going to be standing there for the next 20 minutes, making them uncomfortable. Okay. Forcing them to make, you know, making them uncomfortable. But the other, the other advantage to that is um, without mentioning church or anything like that, what I've experienced is that you're going to get a lot more gospel tracts in their hands. Okay. And normally if someone's accepted something from you already, they're going to be more open to proceed with that conversation. So I'm, I'm very success, successful in getting gospel tracts in their hands. Okay. Now some people might say, well, that's just a waste of time. If they don't hear the gospel, I mean, they're not going to be saved just by reading the tract. I mean, that, that's true. But um, if you do get to give them a, a short presentation of the gospel, and you know you only get a few seconds or a few minutes at least they've got the tracks where they can read through it and get everything that they need to know or um you know it, it it may open up the opportunity because our church details are on these gospel tracks you know if they ever want to look us up you know whether to to follow up ask questions or just to abuse us you know i'm open to that <laughs> just to send us a, an email or a phone call you know showing their displeasure it doesn't matter i'm still going to use that opportunity to give them the gospel when they contact us. I've heard many stories where people have, you know, just kept tracks around their house and then one day pulled it out, contacted the church or visited the church and then got and saved uh, later on. And so, you know, don't shy away from people, giving people the gospel tracks.
But now you've got this in their hands. And remember, if you looked at, remember the last video and we spoke about the gift of God and how I used the example, hey, that tract that, that I've given you, you know, that was a gift. How much did you pay for that? So you've already started the gospel presentation without them realizing you've given them a free gift. It's something they didn't pay for or work for, which you use in, as an illustration later in your gospel presentation. But at this point, you've given them the tract. Hopefully they've taken it on board. The next question is, as soon as it enters into their hands, I then tell them, look, we're just from the local Baptist church. That's when I introduce the church, okay? I don't want to get bogged down on the church immediately. Um, and one of the key differences with the church in Punchbowl back in Sydney is that we could say things like, um, you know, we are, you know, we're just from a local church um, or we're from an independent church. And the demographics were a little bit different in Punchbowl. In Punchbowl, the three main religions that I, that I experienced there in that area, in that, that area um, was uh, Roman Catholicism, Greek Orthodox, and uh, Islam. Okay, that were the three main religions. The demographics here on the Sunshine Coast um, is quite different. Uh, you still got Roman Catholicism as one of the main religions, but then you've got sort of your mainline Protestants. And then I think the third one would be uh, your Pentecostals or your Charismatics, okay? Now, I, don't, I, don't, I know some people lump them as uh, Protestants, but they're not really mainline Protestants like your Anglicans and Presbyterians. Um, so those are the three main groups that I see on the Sunshine Coast. And so introducing yourself like we did back in Sydney in saying, hey, we're just from, a, from the local church or we're from an independent church. What I find using that introduction here on the Sunshine Coast is that I get a lot more questions here Oh, well, what church are you, are you from? What denomination is that church? Those kind of questions. And I don't want, I don't want to get bogged down with a question about church um, immediately. You know, so that's why here on the, on, in Caloundra, here on the Sunshine Coast, I recommend that you just say, hey, look, we're from the local Baptist church. Immediately in their mind, okay, they're Baptists. Um, also, they're not Jehovah Witnesses and they're not Mormons. <laughs> um, so that's why I dropped that there. But I also use that as an opportunity to ask them, so I'll just give you this example. We're just from the local Baptist church. Do you go to church anywhere or do you have a religious background? Okay, because immediately now you just want to ask about them. Okay, and people tend to be quite open. You know, usually they're quite open about their, their own stand as far as what, ch what churches they have attended or what churches they were part of. And it's also very important because depending on the answer, you'll immediately know um, where that person, what that person might be believing to go to heaven. So, for example, if they, they said, oh, we're from, you know, uh, such and such Catholic church, then, you know, they're also trusting their church and their works to get to heaven. Um, if someone says, I'm from such and such Pentecostal church, then, you know, oh, it's, it's likely this person believes they can lose their salvation. Um, and so these are areas, you know, for you, just immediately, just mentally, you can get some information. You can know the kind of person that you're speaking to. But regardless of what they say, your gospel presentation is still going to remain the same, as far as a beginner is concerned. As a beginner, your gospel presentation will still be the same as I showed you in video number two. Okay, now at that point, if they tell you, oh, I'm from such and such Catholic church, the next thing that you wanna say is this. Well, look, more important than church, would you personally be 100% sure if you're going to heaven after this life? Okay, because again, you would just wanna move away from church. You don't want them to think, oh, you're here to ask me for money for your church, you're here to force me to your church, you're here to tell me your church is the only way to heaven. You know, you're moving away from the church, you've, you've told them who you are, you, you kind of know their religious background, and now you're just getting straight onto the point, more important than church, you know, um, would you personally be 100% sure that your soul would go to heaven after this life, or would you have some doubts? Now that's, that's a really good question, or would you have some doubts? Because Sometimes people will be like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'll get to heaven. Um, but every now and again, you're gonna get the honest person that says, yeah, I mean, I do have some doubts, I'm, I'm not sure, okay? So that's a great opportunity to um, be able to say to them, well, you know, I can show you how you can be 100% sure. Has anyone ever shown you from the Bible how you can be sure of going to heaven? Or has any, anyone ever given you um, the gospel of Jesus Christ through, you know, in the Bible, okay? And again, it doesn't really matter too much if they say yes or no to that question, because even if they say yes, I've been shown that, the next question you wanna ask them is, so what do you personally believe someone has to do to go to heaven? 
okay? Um, and th again, that is a super question you wanna ask. You really wanna get that question asked before you get into the gospel presentation, okay? And if they say, oh, I don't know what it will take to get to heaven, the next question is, well, what do you think someone has to do, you know, to get to heaven? Because more often than not, they're gonna say, well, be a good person, you know, do the ten, keep the Ten Commandments, keep the Golden Rule, wh whatever it is that they say, uh, because you're going to use that information later in your gospel presentation to say, hey, when, when you show them that it's by faith alone, and then you show them, and then, you know, um, like Acts 16, verse uh, 30 and 31, so is what must I do to be saved? If they say, oh, to keep the Ten Commandments, at that point, you'll be saying, does this say that you need to keep the Ten Commandments to be saved? And they'll be like, no, it doesn't say that. So you want to use the things that they say and show them from the scriptures why that is not true and why it's, it's faith on Jesus Christ alone. All right, so you've asked them, they've given you an answer. Now, you're, now you want to tell them, would you give me a few minutes, a few quick minutes to show you from the Bible how you can be 100% sure, okay? So you ask them for that opportunity. Now, I would encourage you to do that as a beginner. Now, as an experienced person, you may just want to get straight into it. You, you know, you may just pull out your Bible. Well, let me just show you very quickly what the Bible says about going to heaven, okay? But as a beginner, I don't want you to be completely uncomfortable and, and kind of, you know, forcing yourself. You know, ask for the permission. Would you give me a few minutes just to show you very quickly from the Bible how you can be 100% sure of going to heaven? And, you know, again, if they say yes, I mean, that's a great opportunity. Now, just pull out your Bible and start showing them the verses from Romans 3.23. If they say no, you know, you still may want to be able to present the gospel, but you may need to do it, you know, verbally. If you've memorized those verses, this is a great opportunity to just start quoting, you know, well, you know, the Bible says in Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then you can go from there. Okay. Um, but look, if the person says to you, look, I'm not interested. I don't have time. Thank you for the, for the leaflet. I'll have a read of it later. They just don't want to give you the time of day and they, they want to go. Then you need to change your approach a little bit. And remember, I've asked you to memorize John 3.16. So be polite. Look, you don't, you, we're not trying to force every person at the door to hear the gospel. If they're not interested, they're not interested. We move on to the next door. But before they leave, what I would encourage you to do at that point is to step back and say, well, look, before I leave, can I just leave you one Bible verse? And again, I find more often than not, they're happy to just let you give them one Bible verse. And that Bible verse is John 3.16. You know, I told you it has multiple uses and you know, you can just quickly quote it to them. Well, the Bible says in John 3.16, the most famous verse in the Bible, um, for God so loved the world, so God loves you, that he gave, it's a gift, that he gave his only begotten son, that's Jesus Christ, the son of God. But the most important part says this, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, that's not perish in hell, but have everlasting life. That's life in heaven. But notice that it said that whosoever believeth in him. What's required for you to go to heaven is not your good works. It's not your church. It's not my church. It's putting all your faith and trust on Jesus Christ alone, on his death, burial and resurrection. That's what John 3, 16 says. And at that point, just, just observe, are they interested? You know, there's been times where I was about to leave and I've given them, given them John 3, 16, and all of a sudden they're interested. And then it's opened the opportunity to give them the gospel in full. Otherwise, if they're still resistant and just end like this and say, look, please read, it, leave, uh, please read the leaflet before you chuck it out. You know, I always say that as a bit of a joke before you throw it out, please have a read of the leaflet. It'll only take you five minutes. And if you've got a Bible with you, you can compare the Bible verses that are in this leaflet with your Bible at home. Thanks so much. Um, oh, the other thing is, you know, I'll obviously mention that our church details are in the leaflet. So if they have any other questions, please feel free to contact us at any time. Um, otherwise, you know, if they've given you the opportunity to give, you, give the gospel, then obviously you pull out your Bible and just go from there. So that's a great way to introduce yourself, a great, great way to start the conversation. Um, now, let me just say this. If they're just flatly not interested, they just close the door on you, they tell you to go away, don't get upset. You know, as a beginner, you may feel offended. Please don't be that way. Just rejoice that you're doing the Lord's work. Get on to the next house. There's been times where I've knocked doors, not interested, not interested, go away. 
you know, people aren't home, door after door, and I'm, and I'm starting to get a little discouraged because just nobody wants to hear the gospel. But then right at the end, you know, somebody hears the gospel and gets saved. You know, that's happened many times. And I, I, I'm just constantly reminded, well, God was just moving me along. The, the Lord was just moving me along to get to that person that was ready to hear the gospel and believe. So please never get discouraged. Okay, so on to closing the conversation. So once someone has called upon the name of the Lord, they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, it can be a little bit awkward, you know, especially if it's your first time, you know, you'd be very surprised, I think, and very, very um, excited and not, not sure where to go from there. But the next thing you want to do is invite them to church. So obviously you've already given them the gospel track. They've got that in their hand. Um, you know, they should be happy that they've believed on Christ and have everlasting life. You want to just point to them, hey, our church details are here on the tracks. You know, our church website is here. I'd encourage you to come and visit us. It'd be a great opportunity for you to come and know more about the Bible, to know more about Jesus Christ and, and why He died on the cross for you and His great plan for your life. Um, so invite them to church and tell them they can look up our details on the website. Um, but I would really encourage you, make sure that you take note on if you're using your smartphone or a piece of paper, take note of their name, take note of the address that they're at and any other bits of information that might be important. Okay. Also ask them for contact details like an email address or a phone number. We'd like to get in contact with them if we can. Again, sometimes they don't want to do that. Don't force them. You know, um, if we've got, you know, you're going to have their address anyway. So that's, that's a, you know, we, we know it's where we can come and visit. But don't forget that the Great Commission isn't just preaching the gospel. It's also um, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded uh, you, said Jesus Christ. So the Great Commission isn't just preaching the gospel. It's getting them baptized and also getting them, getting them into church so they can learn more about the Word of God. So all these things are very important. But otherwise, you know, just tell them, you know, get their, get their contact details. Ask them if they have a Bible, okay? And then if they do have a Bible, ask them what kind of Bible do they have, if, if they know. Is it a King James Bible? Is it something else? And if they don't have a Bible, offer them a free Bible. You know, we've got free Bibles in the church. Let me know if you don't know where they are. Uh, we can get, a, get them a free Bible. If you can't drop it off, you know, I'll drop it off if they haven't got a Bible. If they do have a Bible, ask them what kind of Bible do they have. If it's not a King James Bible, ask them, hey, would you like a, a brand new Bible? I'd love to give you a King James Bible. Offer them that. I had one situation where a former Jehovah Witness had her New World Order. No, not New World Order. Oh, it is a New World Order Bible. But it's, a, it's a New World Translation Bible. And she had one for herself. She had one for her daughter. She gave me those copies um, I've, I asked her, can I have her copies and throw them out? She said, yes. And I gave her a King James Bible, uh, which was a great uh, thing to rejoice over. But invite them to church, get their details saved, um, offer them a Bible and offer them, hey, can we follow up with you later? Drop off some preaching DVDs or you know, drop off the Bible. Can we contact you? Um, you know, please open that up, invite them to church, um, see what kind of situation are they, you know, if, you know, do they need someone to pick them up for church? Just find out what you can so we as a church can see, hey, how can we get this individual to church if they can't make it on their own? But otherwise, hey, just congratulate them on believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell them, you know, um, if they can pray for you as you go out and, and preach, preach to the next house and, and move on, you know. Um, thank them for their time as well and just, again, just, just make them feel congratulated for being part of the family of God, you know, being a child of God, such a great thing. And again, point them to the church, point them so they know what steps to take in the future so they can grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so now some additional Bible verses. So what you'll discover as you go preaching the gospel. Now, I've, the, the verses I've given you are going to be the verses that you're going to use nine out of ten times, okay? But there will be times when you're going to be challenged. You're going to be challenged by certain individuals, um, you know, rightfully or wrongly. You know, they maybe they want to push back because they don't believe what you're saying, or they just honestly need a bit more information, and that's fine. But one common objection that I get is when I ask them that very first question, one of those first questions, which is, um, you know, would you personally be 100% sure if you're going to heaven after this life, or would you have some doubts? Many times people say to me um, or to others, nobody can be sure. Nobody can be sure about that. Even professing Christians will say, hey, we can only hope for the best. Nobody can know for sure. Well, the Bible verse that you want to show them 
is in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, which says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, and that ye may know, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So this verse is saying, hey, those that believe on Jesus Christ will know that they have eternal life, which is salvation. You're saved forever, eternal life in heaven with, with the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's a great verse to show people we can know for sure. And don't be um, ashamed of saying, hey, I know for sure that I'm going to heaven. And this is what I normally say. Someone says, oh, you know, we can't know for sure. I'll tell them, hey, I know for sure. And my friend over here knows for sure. And sometimes they'll think, you know, we're being very prideful, but I'll be very quick in saying this. We know for sure, because if it was based on how good I am, I would never get to heaven. I'm not good enough for heaven. The reason I know for sure is because Jesus Christ was perfect. He died on the cross for my sins and gave me that free gift of, of eternal life, which I've received. And you can do that as well. Okay, so make sure, hey, you know, it's great to be confident, but be confident in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be confident in your own flesh. All right. Um, now, the next verse that I want to talk to you about is, um, so after you've shown them John chapter 1, verse 12, uh, but as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. And if they're, they're kind of resistant to pray with you, one verse that might get them over the line is Romans chapter 10, um, verse 13, which reads, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved so you know again i might just show them hey yes you need to call upon the lord you need to express your faith to the lord not just to me but to god himself and you know that might get them over the line to pray with you otherwise if they're if they're really resistant they're shy you know they've said they believe but you know they don't want to they don't want to tell god this is what they believe well, you know, tell them afterwards, look, you don't need to pray with me. Um, if, if, um, if you're really uncomfortable, I'd encourage you when you get back into, into your house, you know, into your bedroom, wherever you're comfortable, that is the opportunity to tell God, these are the things that you believe, to be just assured that you've, you've made, you've settled it with God, you've told Him, you know, you're believing on Christ by faith alone, and you can do that any, at any time. You don't need to do that with me right now at the door. So that's, again, if they're resistant, but try it. Try to get them to say those words to pray with you uh, so you can at least have the assurance that they've definitely put their faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. So these next verses that I've got for you are for people that are stuck on works. You've shown them that salvation is by faith, by believing on Jesus Christ alone, and yet they'll tell you things, what, just believe? You know, surely you must have the works. Surely you must be striving to keep the Ten Commandments. You know, to keep the Ten Commandments, strive to keep the Ten Commandments, Promise to God that you're going to keep the, the commandments of, and the laws of God. Do the works. Um, I'll often find the people that are most resistant with works are professing Christians, especially the Charismatics and the Pentecostals. Um, and the main reason for that is because they think they're keeping their salvation because of their works. Um, and they can lose it if they don't have, the, you know, whatever arbitrary level of works they believe they need to have. Um, so the, one of the best verses is Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 which reads for by grace are you saved through faith so it's it's by grace god's grace which is undeserving favor okay through faith right believing by by your faith on the lord jesus christ and then it says and that not of yourselves it is nothing you can do not of yourselves it is nothing that you can do it is the gift of god not of works, lest any man should boast. So this is a great verse because it talks about the gift of God. You've already explained to them that gifts are free. And again, it talks about the, how faith, um, salvation is the gift of God through faith. It just reinforces that free gift of salvation. And then it says very clearly, not of works. And then it says why it's not of works, lest any man should boast. God does not want any person boasting in their flesh. You know, your self-righteousness will never get you to heaven. You need the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ upon you, which is received by grace through faith. Okay. Now, another verse that you'd like to use um, referring to re uh, works is in Romans chapter 3, verse 27 and 28. And this one goes really well with Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Romans 3, 27 and 28, which says, 
Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. So can we boast about our salvation? No, because it's not of works. It's by the law of faith. And then it continues on. It says, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law, without the deeds, without the deeds of the law, without the works of the Lord, are you justified? It's purely by faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Another reference that you might like to use is just in the next chapter in Romans chapter four, verse five. And it says this very clearly, but to him that worketh not. So no works. You've got to have no works to be saved. He that worketh not. But believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So how is our faith counted for righteousness? Those that believe. Those that do not do the work, but those that are believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how you have, that's how you were made righteous before God. Okay. Now, another uh, passage that you might like to take down, well, definitely take this down, especially as a beginner, is in Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Galatians chapter 2, verse 16, which says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. So a man is not justified by the works of the law. If you're trusting in the works of the law, you are not justified. Okay. But then he continues and says, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Okay, so no amount of you trying to keep the works of the law is ever going to get you saved. If you think it's Jesus and works, you cannot be saved. Okay, it's by faith alone. So, you know, you don't need these verses to give the gospel. Um, in fact, I find myself with, with the verses that I gave you in, in video number one and video number two, I find that most of the time, those are the only verses I really use. It's just when I get challenged, when people need a little bit more information, that I'll turn to these other verses. And, you know, you, you don't need to memorize these verses. You, you know, I'd encourage you to memorize them, of course. But you may want to use the back of your Bible. A lot of Bibles have um, a place of notes at the back. So you may want to write down these references or maybe just write out the whole verse at the back of your Bible. I've also seen some, of, um, some people print these out, print out these verses, and then they um, just stick it to the back of their Bible. So it's something they can refer to quite quickly if they need to. So that's all I've got for lesson number three, video number three. Um, video number four will be about getting out to the, getting out to, you know, doing soul win as a silent partner. Okay. Thanks for your time.